to see it, friends, and welcome to The World Transformed. I'm Phil Bowermaster, and all this week, I'm talking with forward-looking entrepreneur Nate Grunovan. How you doing, Nate? Doing well, Phil. Good to be back. It's great to have you with us, and we thought tonight we'd get into the future of real estate. This is something we talked a little bit about on the Monday show in terms of how financing real estate transactions might be occurring, but there's a lot more going on in real estate than just that, isn't there? There really is. There really is. And technology, its limitations and possibilities are opening up a whole lot of new opportunities. So let's talk a little bit about how real estate transactions might be changing. How are some of the technologies <laughs> that we talk about maybe on this show sometimes going to impact how people shop for and buy houses in the future? Absolutely. So one of the first you know, I've heard on your show is, is VR. So one of the big things that's uh, new technologies that's hitting the real estate market is, is VR and 3D photography. So it's not on every listing today, but you can go out and look on these portals and sometimes you'll see a 3D listing. And so that means you can immerse yourself either on your computer, on your phone, or in virtual reality in the home and actually walk through and really get a good sense of what it's like inside. I think everybody's used to the idea by now that you don't just look at a static image. You're going to look at several images. Mm -hmm. And it's nice when somebody will provide like a video walkthrough. But what you're talking about here is more like a self-paced. You bring it up and here's the house and now I'm moving through the house. Kind of like on, exactly Go right. on Google Earth. That's, that it's, sort of it's thing. It's just like Google Street View. So okay. you get to choose where to walk. You can walk into the bathroom. Then you can watch the kitchen. You can you can teleport around and really see what's, you know, what's best. <laughs> What would, what would it be like if I were in the bedroom and I got hungry and suddenly appeared in the kitchen? That sort of, that sort of idea. <laughs> that is funny. And then, so with, uh, with VR, mm -hmm. presumably you get an even more immersive experience, mm -hmm. right? So Absolutely. You're... And one of the amazing things to me is that this technology is here now. You know, VR is really good. Um, 3D photography, the technology for real estate, is excellent. I don't know if you've heard of Matterport or any of those companies, but you know, the technology is there. And you know, real estate's always been somewhat of a laggard industry, somewhat you know, slow to pick things up, especially technology. But to me, it's a no-brainer. You know, it really gives people the sense of place, um, and and I'm I'm encouraging, and you know, I, I believe that VR will be very big in the future. But it's interesting how slowly it's it's taking on. Do you think VR will make a difference in terms of people needing to be in the actual location in order to buy a house? Are people going to buy a house based on VR, or if, if that's not as likely, what will happen? Yeah, think? so already, you know, one in five buyers are buying homes sight unseen. And that's just because it's such a hot market right now. One in five? Yeah, crazy. Um, but <laughs> VR will make that, you know, better. That's incredible. So, you know, I don't know. There, there are different types of buyers. There are some buyers who actually need to be there. This will help them. But there are some buyers who, you know, they're like, it's a roof. It's enough, you know. Right, sure. <laughs> it's, it's in the neighborhood I'm looking for, and you know. So I guess you know what's what's been your experience with buying real estate? Like, well, my, my experience is I have bought real estate with my wife, so we're, we're a partnership, and we function very differently where that's concerned. Where I can almost picture myself saying, "Yeah, I can live in that place. That's fine," based on a VR experience. Right. And I can't imagine her doing that at all. And why do you think that is? Uh, well, she. I think she needs to actually physically be in the place. Mm -hmm. I think that that would make that would make a huge difference for her. But I but I also think what it might do is help her eliminate places. That's right? exactly right. Yeah. If if she were to certainly photographs help her do that, right? She can look at a place and go, oh no no no, absolutely not, no never. That's exactly right. But sometimes we would be looking for a house and it looked great on paper, mm -hmm. and we got there, and as soon as she walked in, no, right? Just yep. one look around, and it was like. Exactly Let's right. not waste any more, any more time on this, right? Exactly right. If VR can provide that realistic yeah. of an experience, exactly, it at least shortens uh, exactly. the, the rejects, right? Yeah, virtual reality really helps bring that transparency to real estate. Like you can't hide, you know, that one shelf that doesn't end up in the fifteen MLS photos that you end up looking at on a, you know, online. Right. Um, so it's it's really nice to, as you said, eliminate places. And if you have fifteen places, maybe you only go see three because you've walked through all fifteen. Now, one of the notes I have here is drones. How are, how are drones factoring into real, the real estate purchase decision? Right. So, you know, I spend a lot of time with real estate agents. And one of the things that they're crazy about is, oh, drones, drone photography. We, we love drones. And so, you know, <laughs> 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 it, 
it's it's really interesting because you know they're less into the the whole VR thing than they are drones. Okay. So that's and that's just you know the start, right? The right. the aerial photography that gives you the real lay of the land. They have these nice intro videos, but what's coming is interior drones too. So you know the three photography we're talking about. You could just you know let your drone auto fly through the house. It'll take you know the three D photos and stitch them all together until you have a virtual tour. Um, you know, I was actually speaking to an inspector the other day, and he's like, "Oh, drones are stealing my job," and I'm like, "No, they're not. Like, if anyone has a safer job, it's an inspector who needs to go into the closets and check the boiler. Like, you know, a drone's not going to do that." But you know, we talk about disruption. We talk about you know where where this technology is going. It's really there for the marketing material. Drones are are going to be there for marketing more so than ever. Um, but at, to what extent can they be used for maybe other parts of the transaction? How about uh, artificial intelligence? Where does that factor in? Absolutely. So AI is going to be huge in real estate. It's already, you know, there are these things called automated valuation models. So if you've been on Zillow, you might have seen Zestimate. Um, you know, you might be checking, you know, how much my house is appreciated. How much is my house worth? Um, AI and, and just getting better data in general is, is going to really help um, price real estate and make people more confident in their purchases. That's, it's really interesting to think about how much seemingly more complicated the whole thing becomes. But really, uh, on one level, you're talking about simplifying so many things, right? This is all about simplifying. Yeah. Uh, the, it's the, all about bringing transparency to a black box. Right. And real estate today right. is really just, you know, your, your realtor does a great job of handling all these ancillary services and juggling everything that needs to go on. But ultimately, you want transparency. You want to know what house you're buying. You want to know how much it should, how much it's worth so that you can place the right offer. How much of that black box effect do the real estate agents depend upon? And the other side of that question is, are we ultimately going to reach a point where they're not needed anymore? Are they like the next travel agents or you know, gas pump jockeys, right? They're, they're, are they on their way out because technology is going to push them out the door? That's a really interesting question. Um, and I think there are lots of differing opinions on this. My personal opinion is that technology is actually limited in how much it can disrupt the the real estate agent. Um, okay. I, I believe that, you know, there, there is a lot of technology. Agents feel like they have, they're being fought from all sides. You know, they have Zillow's and the realtor.com's of the world who are sort of taking those, those listings and democratizing them to the world. Um, a lot of, I think their role is going to change ultimately. Today, they do a lot of paper pushing and administrative roles. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just because the transaction is so complicated. Ultimately, I believe an agent's highest and best use is being that counselor. You know, they're the professional in the room who's done this a hundred times, a thousand times, and they can tell you if you're making a good decision or not. And ultimately, when you're making, you know, such an impactful decision, you know, this, this is the biggest purchase of your life, it's really important that you have someone who's done it before and can, and can make sure you don't feel that buyer's remorse or, you know, the regret. Like, it, it's really important, I believe, in agents... I believe agents are going to be around for a while. And, it, and that then works well for those who actually are interested in being kind of a trusted advisor, kind of a friend it's through exactly the whole right. process rather than those who are just kind of... It's exactly right. You, you, if you take the analogy of you know, bro, uh, financial brokerage, mm -hmm. um, you know, Charles Schwab exists, right? Where you can control all of your, your finances yourself, but there's still a huge market for those, you know, your own broker, your own financial advisor who can help you walk you through the transaction or walk you through um, all of those insecurities, especially. Right. Make sure you're making the right decision. Give you that advice you want. So there's going to be a market for people that want to do it themselves. There already is. Um, and there will continue to be a market for the trusted professional. I, I guess the difference then is looking ahead. The transaction, from our perspective, becomes less of a black box. Exactly. But will remain a fairly complicated thing and will still always be a big deal in people's lives. When That's they exactly do it. right. And it's it's the kind of thing where you want a sounding board or you want some... I mean, sometimes some people just want to be told what to do. Exactly I mean, there, right. there are some people who want to be yeah. told what to do, but there are other people who just, they need to sound it off somebody, right? They need somebody to say, yep, that sounds right. Or, oh, did you think about this? That's exactly right. And without a realtor in, in the mix, you're not going to have that. That's exactly right. And to summarize your point... Um, the, the technology will demystify the transaction. You know, drones, VR, AI, this will all make your decision easier and less mystifying. 
Um, but I do believe there are technological limitations. People do not feel comfortable getting advice from a robot. You know, they want to right. know that this person has been there before. They want to know the experience and the stories. You know, they want to hear about that water main that broke last year and got repaired, but maybe the repair was a little funky. They want to know about the school teacher who's, you know, won national awards down the street because they're going to be sending their kids there. Those are things that technology really can't give you. Right, right. Well, let's look ahead. Let's let's look at beyond the, just the transaction changing. Let's look at the future of housing a mm -hmm. little bit. Now, we know that eventually we're going to all live in caves carved into the mountains and it'll look very planet of the apes -like. of course but between now and then that's the friday show when we get into <laughs> when we get into that kind of stuff what's going to happen with housing one thing you and i talked about recently over coffee was was my suggestion that autonomous vehicles in the future might change how houses look because we won't have these big stonking garages sitting next to our houses the car doesn't have need a place to sleep because the cars are just always going to be out moving all the time and people you know will turn that part of their house sometimes up to like 40% of the footprint of your house into usable space. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's so interesting to think of suburbia changing from a land of garages to just bigger houses, or maybe, you know, that's that, that would change, you know, maybe your living space, maybe you added home gym, like all these existing houses. It'll be really interesting to see how they, how they shift, you know, what's, what's important. Um, and as cars, car ownership becomes less important, maybe, you know, something else will become more. Yeah. So we have workshops or we have offices or exactly. we have gyms or playrooms or who knows what exactly we'll figure out what to do with That's that exactly right with that extra space. Well, what else? What else do you see happening? What's going to happen with the what's the future of the home from Nate's view? <laughs> I, I see there being a redefinition of what home means. And okay. I think this comes with every generation. You know, you, you think of, you know, the 50s generation, the white picket fence, the nuclear family. Um, then sort of into the 80s, 90s, we got, you know, bigger homes and you get sort of the suburbia. And um, I think we're going to see all this shift again, you know, in the 2000s and maybe the teens, we saw people moving into the cities and apartment living getting really big. And right. I think we're going to see that trend continue. Um, I see the, the sort of the rise of the third place. And, you know, this, that's what Starbucks calls sort of this... Um, cut that. Starbucks calls this thing the third place and that is this place between home and work where you can you know mingle you can read like what, whatever you want to do it it works as sort of this starbucks you know, is an example of a third place starbucks actually coined the term uh-huh um, but are they a third place what's explain what a third place is sure I, I believe a third place is this place where between the home and work mm-hmm this is a place sort of where you can go and work, you can go play, you can go read. Okay, so Starbucks is one. Right? Exactly. Starbucks Star is a third place. Starbucks is a third place. You know, Stephen has published this piece called, In the Future, Everything Will Be a Coffee Shop. <laughs> so That's funny. And it, it talks about the fact that the, it's the rise of the third place. We didn't, we didn't know the term third mm -hmm. place. If Starbucks had only listened to our show, they would, <laughs> of course, they would have known now, to now use think, their own term. Exactly. But, and think like this is the, the rise of the sharing economy. So we right. work, right? It's that, it's that shared space where you can really... It can be whatever you want it to be. Right. All you need is an internet connection and power, right? Amen. <laughs> yeah. And Amen. So, yeah, we work and I think we're going to see a lot more shared housing. Um, but it's it's interesting to see maybe, you know, the millennial generation, the generation after us, you know, what we value. Do we value privacy? Maybe not as much. I think it'll be interesting to see if down the road, there there is definitely this convergence towards urban centers. Thomas Fry, the futurist, uh, few months ago was on the show and we talked about the future of cities. There's this global move, not just in the U.S., global abandonment of small towns and rural areas yeah. and people are coming together in the cities. Now, does that trend continue or does ultimately technology says place doesn't matter, just doesn't, doesn't matter? Do we disperse at some point and housing takes on a, a whole other shape? What do you think? Exactly. So I think we've, we've got a few more years where you yeah. know, urban centers are, are centers of opportunity. Um, and and culture and experience the experience economy that millennials value so much, but I that's a really interesting point. Um, I do see sort of the reign of location, location, location being disrupted by virtual reality. You know, let's let's sort of do a thought experiment here. Like, if you can put on your VR goggles and teleport yourself into the workplace, to a vacation spot, wherever you are, you have those experiences that we value so much. Does it matter that you are so close to the fire? You know, does it matter that you're living in the, the really expensive urban apartment or can you move you know, a couple miles out and still sort of have that telepresence but 
actual feel actually feel like you're there. I think it comes down to when will VR make us really feel like we're there, right? Exactly. That, that we're not having this weird sort of out of body experience, which is what it is today. Exactly. To an, a true subjective sense of place. When VR can provide that, I think you're right. It, Anything can happen. Right? Exactly. Yeah, and, and it won't matter. We'll, people will be underground, right? We, we will be in the caves or whatever. Because as long as you're having the subjective experience of sunlight and... So you could be in a really small enclosed space in a big city or in a small town or anywhere, but have the subjective experience of sitting at the beach. Exactly. Or, or at work, oh. you know, around a conference room table. And that, that's the crazy part. Right. Right? Like I, I'm seeing things like this, you know, this Facebook virtual reality beta where everyone can collaborate in one space and they can write notes, they can look over their shoulder and check code. You know, like this, the future of the workplace might not be, you know, what we work is today. You right. know, we work is is the now. It's the shared space. It's where everyone can sort of come and share those resources. But you know, maybe the future is just you know sitting on your couch with your VR goggles. Yeah, if the, but being at work, if the workspace is basically just the internet. Providing a subjective experience, exactly, and that's available anywhere. It's really hard to say where people end up. Exactly, uh, uh, it'll be it'll be factors that we can't really predict yet, deciding where people live and what housing will be. Exactly right. And if people, you know, I don't know what the the social climate will be in the future, but maybe we'll maybe we'll want to unplug, and maybe that's a desirable experience too. In which case, all of this is for naught, and we still want to be in the urban centers and around the culture and stuff, but. Um, you know, maybe there's going to be some sort of anti-technology, anti-technology movement um, for the younger generations. But for I sure, think for for many, it's gonna for many is the is the key word here. Yeah, it's gonna change a lot of how valuable it is to be really close to those cities. Yeah, in a, in a world where any subjective experience is available electronically, electronically, real experiences are going to become some kind of luxury item. They're going to become some kind of uh, premium, high end. Yeah. And it's, it's funny to think, experiences. they already are, right? Oh, yeah. Like, there are a lot of people that spend a lot of time on the internet, video games, whatever they do, and, you know, that that's what they enjoy, and so, you know, who am I to judge? But it's interesting, because going out to dinner, or going to a national park, or any of those experiences that maybe I value a lot, um, you know, those people, it's a luxury item, right. ultimately. Yeah, it's something you can, you can do once in a while. Well, there you go, I think that gives us some idea of what the future of the real estate market is and a little little bit of an idea of the future of housing. So I'll tell you what, Nate, why don't you come back on Friday and we'll talk about the future of everything else, okay? We, we, we've, we've covered those two things, so then we'll, we'll get the rest of it, okay? Future of everything else. Can't wait. All right. Sounds great. Thanks for being with us. Thank you all for joining us. We will be back with a brand new show on Friday. And until next time, live to see it. Mm-hmm.